Good evening. First of all, let me just say it's so humbling for me to be here. Every time I go out and meet people, I'm never taken for granted um, the support you people show the team and myself personally. So very happy to be here. It's a pleasure. And I don't have too long up here, a few minutes, and I want to take just a few moments to share with you some snippets from my life. Sometimes when you see a public figure or someone you've seen on TV or you watch their profession, where they play, it's very hard to know the reality of their life, where they came from, what made them who they are, or why they are the way they are. So it's my goal that in just a few minutes, I will give you a glimpse into how I was able to come here today and stand on the stage. I was born in a very, very tiny village in Africa in a country called the Congo. If you tried to get to my village today, you couldn't get to the village. It's impossible to get there. The hospital I was born in no longer exists. So we were born into a country that had crazy civil wars. My earliest memory as a child was of soldiers breaking into a house with rifles and assault weapons and putting my parents on the floor and my grandparents on the floor and taking televisions and dressers and they just took everything. That's my earliest memory as a human being. When I was four years old, we moved to London, England and we moved into the low income area of the city. I come from a family of two parents and six children, big family, and we moved into a two bedroom apartment. And so I was, as a young boy, in very tough circumstances. My father was a Muslim when I was born. My mother was a Catholic. By the time I was six, they both became Christians. So I was confused very early. I didn't know what to do. By the time I was eight or nine, I became angry at God. Eight or nine years old. By the time I was 12, I wasn't speaking to God. And I stopped going to church from age 13 to age 17. and never stepped foot in any church, never. My goal was to become a professional soccer player. And I knew I would do it at 13. All my coaches told me I had the talent. All my friends knew I had the talent. And so I stopped trying in school. I stopped listening to my parents. I became very arrogant because for me, my future was guaranteed. I was secure, I was sorted. And then I got to 15. And one day, June 9th, 2003, I remember this day perfectly. We just left school, myself and five friends and we stole a motorcycle in London. And we took turns riding this motorcycle around the city for like three or four hours. Right before we decided to finish, I took one last go on the motorcycle and I lost control of the bike and I smashed into a car. That accident required two surgeries and I couldn't walk properly for two years. And so my dream of soccer was finished. In England, you leave school at 16. So at 16, I had no professional soccer contract and no education. And I was living at home. I have no idea what my future holds. At my lowest moment is when a man told me to go and read the Bible, my lowest point. I had nothing left. I couldn't walk, had no education, had no job. So why not? And it's when I began to read the Bible that night, June 12, 2005, the first time in years I'd opened this book. And I opened from the first page, Genesis 1. And I began to read. And I read and read and read and read the book. I started reading at 2 a.m. By the time I looked up, it was 6 p.m. the next day. The Bible. I came out of the room. Went to the bathroom, went into the kitchen, ate, came back and began to read. Several more hours. And for two weeks, that became my routine. Do you know how far I got in the Bible? Genesis chapter 3. <laughs> in two weeks. Three chapters. Because I couldn't believe some of the words I was reading in the Bible. And that's what I really came to share with you. Because this changed the way I thought completely. And... Eight, nine years on, I still think this way, everything I learned that night. The first thing that shocked me about the Bible was the way God, who I didn't believe in at the time, created things. 
I read where it says, and God says, let us make fish. And God says, let us make birds. And God said, let us make stars. And God says, let us make animals. And I read this, and I began to notice some strange principles. When God wanted to make fish, he spoke to the water. He's very clear. And God says, let the ocean be filled with fish. And when God wanted to make plants, he spoke to the soil. And God says, let the earth sprout vegetation. When he wanted animals, he spoke to the earth. When he wanted stars, he spoke to the atmosphere. And so the conclusion I reached was, whatever God creates, he always first speaks to the environment where that thing will need to live. He wanted fish, he speaks to water. That's where you go. He wanted plants, he spoke to the soil. That's where you go. He wanted animals, he spoke to the jungles. That's where you go. And then he created me. So I checked. He never spoke to the water. He never spoke to the soil. He never spoke to the atmosphere. He never spoke to the jungles. When God made the person sitting in your chair, he spoke to himself. And that shocked me. Wow. Fish need water. Birds need air. Plants need soil. Me, Steve Zakuani. I need God. That was my first realization. And so I began to turn those pages, and I was shocked. And I concluded, fish don't want water. They need water. So I didn't necessarily want God. That was not my problem. I decided right then and there that no matter where my life takes me, I need God. I cannot function without him. And that changed my life forever. The presence of God is where I belong. You take a fish from water, it dies. Pull a plant from soil, it cannot grow. Take a star from the atmosphere, becomes a meteorite and dies. Take any human being from God's presence and he dies. And that was my decision right there, June 12, 2005. I made a commitment to Jesus Christ on that day. And I decided, no matter what happens in life, ups and downs, no matter what happens, I understand I need you. I don't want you, I need you. And that became my life. And then God began to mess up my thinking. He began to give me dreams and visions. I began to see myself playing soccer in front of thousands, and I couldn't even walk. And I told God, this is crazy. I can never accomplish this. And the Lord began to give me understanding on his purposes and his teaching. And this is what I concluded. Everything in the world begins first as an idea. That chair you're sitting on was an idea. This iPad in my hand was an idea. This microphone you hear me through was an idea. Nothing exists unless it was first an idea. But the idea begins in the mind of the maker. And so the only person who knows what a product exists for is the one who made the product. Who makes the iPad? Apple. So who knows iPad best? So I concluded... God made me. So nobody knows iPad like Apple. Nobody knows BMW cars like BMW. And nobody knows me like God knows me. That was my conclusion. My teachers had opinions. My friends had opinions. My coaches had opinions. But nobody's opinion even concerned me anymore once I discovered that the only opinion that mattered is the one who makes a product. And so God's word became the standard for my life, his word. And that's really why I came here tonight, is to tell you, we live in a society where people will try to make you become certain ways and conform to certain standards and live in certain ways. And my coming here tonight to tell you, these are just opinions. The only thing that is constant and you should live by is what your manufacturer, your creator says about you. And even though I couldn't walk, he's told me, all things are possible to him who believes. He told me, you are an overcomer. And I begin to change the way I thought about myself. Because God changed my life. And so I'm now 25, and it's been the best eight years of my life. Not one night of regret in my life. Because I chose to believe what the Creator said about me. And so I'm sitting there reading the Bible. Three chapters in two weeks. And as I'm reading the Bible, I concluded, I was born to do what I do today. I was born 
to play soccer. And it began to become a passion of mine. But my motivation became different. It was no longer about making money. It was no longer about being famous. It was no longer about scoring goals. It was about having a platform where I could do this. That's why God gave me that gift, the platform. You see, when you discover your purpose in life, you no longer need to experiment. Suppose you bought me a piano as a gift, a keyboard, and I have no idea what a keyboard is. I'm living in some far off jungle and I don't know what a keyboard is. And I take that keyboard and I use it as a doorstop for 50 years. Do you know that door will never close? Never. It will do a good job, but it will never play music. And then one day you come to visit me and you say, what are you doing? This is designed to play music, not stop doors. And you start playing me some keys. And suddenly the keyboard comes to life. It's discovered its purpose. Why? When you discover your purpose, you stop experimenting. Maybe you've been spending your life stopping doors up until this point. And God sent me here tonight to tell you he wants to hear your music. He wants you to play your keys. I came to tell you your purpose is so awesome you have no idea. All I do all day is play my keys. I play music. I can't believe I get paid to do what I do. I still can't believe it. Wake up in the morning to do my purpose that God designed me for. I wonder why you exist. I wonder why you exist. I drove here in my car today. Do you know the person who made my car? I went to his factory after I bought a car because I love cars and planes. I love transportation. I went to where they make these cars. And he began to tell me the process. And before I even saw one car, he took me to this massive room and they had all these blueprints all across the table of what the car would be like. In other words, the manufacturer established the purpose of the car before he designed the car. He says, we want a black car, black on black. We want it to be automatic transmission. We want it to go 0 to 60 in five seconds. We want it, and he established all of that. Then he made the car. Nobody ever makes a product and then says, I wonder what this is. Never. The fact that the car exists is proof it has a purpose. The fact that anything exists is proof it has a purpose. Most times we say, I'm just trying to find my purpose. I came to tell you tonight that you were not trying to find your purpose. Your purpose brought you here. God was finished before he began with you. One of my favorite verses of scripture, read it when you go home. Isaiah 46 verse 9. This one keep me going through all the tough times in my life. God speaking. He says, remember the former things of old. I am God. Isaiah 46 chapter 9. 46 verse 9. Remember the former things of old. I am God. There is none beside me. I make the end from the beginning. That kept me as a teenager. God finishes first. And then he backs up and begins. So don't ever feel worthless. Don't ever feel insignificant. Don't ever think you're just here to just make a living. Don't ever question whether or not you have a purpose. Your purpose brought you here. If you are breathing and you have air in your lungs and you got oxygen and your legs is working and you got energy, that means you have a purpose. God never begins until he is finished. That's why I have so much peace. Because no matter what you're going through, it's too late. God's already finished. And that's how you sleep at night. And that's how you look like this when you, no, no stress. Yeah. <laughs> no stress. No stress. What else did I learn? I want to give you this. God met me at my absolute lowest point. When I met God, I had low self-esteem, no self-confidence. I lived in an environment, a neighborhood that was full of crime, college dropouts. I mean, anything you can imagine, we saw it growing up. I had friends killed. I had no sense of self-worth. And then God met me right at that point. And my experience that one night June 12, 2005, with Jesus Christ, transformed the entire course of my life. And this is what I want to leave you with. 
Why did I learn that nine? There are five questions in life that you must answer. I won't give you all five, I'll give you one. You normally hear people say, the toughest question to answer in life is, who am I? Identity. It's a tough question. There's an even tougher one. And it's, why am I? That one is tough. It's a question of purpose. Why do I exist? Why am I here? Why did God give me birth? Why was I born into this family? Why was I born into this country? And these are the questions I had. And here's how I came through it. When you buy an iPad or a car or any product, anything you buy, a bed, a TV, and you open the box, the first thing you see is never the product. Have you noticed? Never. You always see a small book on top, right? It's called a manual. And the book says, before operating my product, please read this carefully. How many of you read that manual? Don't lie in church. <laughs> don't lie. You see, you buy a DVD player and you don't read the manual, that's why you have a blinking clock right now at home. It's always 12 o'clock. <laughs> the manual is a book that the manufacturer writes concerning his product. He tells you what to expect from it, what you can demand of it, what it can produce, and what it can do. And so we will tell you, for example, this DVD player has this function and that function, and it's in writing. So if it's there, it means it can do it. What am I trying to say? God never demands of you something he never gave you ability to do. God demands fish to swim. Fish are born with swim. I've never seen a fish taking swimming lessons, never. <laughs> God demands birds to fly. That's what he built them for. You never see a bird attending flight school, never, never seen it. Why? If God creates you for it, he builds you with it. I was, on, I, I was in Ohio, Cleveland, Ohio. I was on a plane, 737, massive jet. And the pilot comes and says, we are grounded momentarily because there's a storm up ahead. And I looked out the window and there was a pigeon outside. And the Holy Spirit spoke to me. He says, there are two kinds of birds on the planet. There's a bird that men made and one that God made. The one that men made is the one you're sitting on. And it's grounded by circumstances. Looked out the window and the pigeon took off. I am sitting in a multi-million dollar construct and I'm grounded by a storm. And a pigeon took off. <laughs> if man build it, storms can ground it. If God builds it, you take off in any season. That's what Holy Spirit showed me. Whatever you're born with to do, you are born with it. I promise you. When I discovered that, I became so confident. I said, God, whatever God demands of me is already on the inside. So when you can't walk as a teenager and God tells you you will play in front of thousands, you stop questioning him. Because he would never ask me unless I could do it. My final point. Yes, the fish is born with the ability to swim. Yes, the bird is born with the, with the talent to fly. But a fish will never swim unless it remains in the environment it was created for. I don't care how high that bird can fly. I don't care how fast that fish can swim. If it ever decides to leave the environment, it is over. I don't care how many goals I score in my career. I don't care how many awards I win, how many championships. I don't care how good the people tell me I am. I don't care. The most important thing in my life is maintaining the environment I was designed for, and that's the presence of God. I don't mess with that one. If you take a fish from water, you don't have to kill it. It dies naturally. Any human being outside God's presence dies naturally. 
And so coming to Jesus for me was not a religious conversion. It was a fish getting back into water. That's what it was for me. I came back into the presence of my maker. I came back to my manufacturer. I came back to the one who knows me best. It was an iPad coming back to Apple. <laughs> that's what it was for me that day. And that's what I want to leave you with. When you see a fish in water, by the time I'm done, you're going to love fish. <laughs> it doesn't struggle to swim. It's so natural and effortless. Why? When you are doing what you're born to do and you are in the right environment, it happens naturally. So if you are striving and everything you try ain't working, you try this one, it fails. You try that, it fails. And you try this, it fails. You have to check the environment you're in. I came all this way today. On my day off, that's how much I love you. <laughs> came all this way to tell you, get back into the environment. Get back where you belong. Get back into the presence of God. Get back there. He says, one thing I want them to know about me. I love the presence of God. I don't want to be nowhere else. I want to pray for you before I go. Can I do that? I would love to pray for you. Every individual here is so important to God. The most important person in the room is the one in your chair, in your clothes. So important to God. Can we close our eyes, bow our heads? I don't know any of you in here personally. I don't know your stories, but God does. Maybe things are going well in your head, or maybe you're having a tough time right now. I don't know what your situation is. But under the direction of the Holy Spirit, I want you right where you are in your seat tonight to make a commitment to God again. Whether it's good or bad right now, commit your life once again to your Creator. I want everyone in here to pray this with me. Father, everybody, Father, thank you for my life. Thank you for giving me strength. Thank you for your purpose. I've tried it my way and it hasn't worked. Tonight, I rededicate my life to you. I come back to the water. I come back to my creator. Fill me with your Holy Spirit. Fill me with your presence that my gifts and my talents and my purpose may be fulfilled in you and for you in the name of Jesus my creator my presence I shout amen shout amen welcome back to the water I love you guys so much. I want to meet everyone here tonight. I will stay as long as it takes to meet everybody here tonight. Because people are so important to God. And you are all important to me. You ain't starstruck when you meet me. I'm starstruck when I meet you. You've seen me on TV. I want to see you on TV. I want to read your books. I want to eat at your restaurants. I want to come to your universities. I want to come preach in your church one day. So I'd love to meet you. God bless you. Thank you for having me. And I'll see you around.